Good morning. I'm Susie Beckin, and I'm representing Kaiser Permanente. My son, Chad, experienced a diagnostic error. There was a lack of patient-provider relationship and a failure by physicians to listen to my son in the diagnostic process. Chad was misdiagnosed three times in one year. He was ultimately diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. At the age of 37, Chad died after 16 months of treatment and painful side effects. What if the proper tests were done initially for an accurate diagnosis and treatment initiated earlier, then maybe he would have survived. Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Coffey with MedStar Health. My son, Stephen Coffey II, we call him Deuce, experienced a diagnostic error. His metabolic condition, galactosemia, was not fully explained to us as parents or among the military staff at the hospital. At eight weeks old, Stephen was diagnosed with fulminant liver failure, secondary to galactosemia. And one week later, he had a liver transplant. What of the doctors who had told me on the phone my son had galactosemia clearly articulated the severity of his condition, confirmed my understanding, and the medical providers had not deviated from the standard of care? My name is Kimberly Rogers, and I'm representing American Heart Association. I experienced a diagnostic error. I was dealing with a lot of pain and medical issues from high stress. I was told I needed to scale down my stress, so my doctor set me up with clinical massages, anger management, and even a nutritionist. Instead of focusing on the internal, they focused on the external. I was not provided a physical nor a carotid artery examination, which are customary procedures for the information I provided. Uh, nevertheless, I suffered a stroke a few months later at the age of 42. What if my doctor had prescribed a carotid artery examination and a full physical? Hi, my name is Barry McEwen, and I'm representing the American Diabetes Association. I received a diagnostic error, or perhaps more accurately, a delayed diagnosis. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at the age of 50. I was actually an adult onset, slowly emerging person with type 1 diabetes. My type 1 diagnosis was made nine years later at the age of 59. Type 2 medications are ineffective for people with type 1 diabetes. I was okay, but others in a sim similar situation were not. Improperly treated type 1 diabetes can put the patient at high risk for severe health issues. What if actual blood tests were used instead of cognitive bias diagnosis? Good morning. My name is Suzanne Schrant, and I've had rheumatoid arthritis for 28 years, and I work for the Arthritis Foundation. I experienced a diagnostic error when, despite my warnings and concerns, an abnormal bleeding disorder was not diagnosed prior to my left wrist replacement. And then after surgery, that same abnormal bleeding was again misdiagnosed as normal post-surgical swelling. The result was the near loss of my hand and ultimately permanent nerve damage to that hand. What if the surgeon had listened to my concerns and warnings about the abnormal bleeding that had occurred with all three of my prior joint replacements and had done the surgery inpatient and placed a post-surgical drain as I had requested him to do? Good morning. My name is Jeanette Averett. I experienced a diagnostic error. This occurred when the appropriate workup for my anemia was not recommended. This resulted in a delay in my diagnosis of stage two colorectal cancer, 
which was a pineapple-shaped mass that metastasized and resulted in multiple surgeries, a colostomy, and chemotherapy. What if appropriate diagnostic tests had been recommended and performed in a timely manner? Good morning. My name is Mary Balaker. I represent the National Kidney Foundation. I'm a medically complex patient. I was diagnosed at the age of nine years old with kidney disease. I've been on dialysis multiple times. I've had four kidney transplants. I'm one of the lucky ones. I did not experience a diagnostic area era during my multiple health encounters. I experienced chest pain and pain with breathing. I sought medical attention, went to the transplant clinic. A resident believed that I was too young to have a PE due to my age, which was my age bias. However, my transplant doctor assumed the worst due to my medical complexity and ordered a BQ lung scan and discovered multiple PEs in both of my lungs. I was admitted immediately and treated in the hospital. Although I was lucky, what if? What if doctors considered the worst it could be, especially when patients have complex histories? Is it he would, if he had not done the testing, I could have died? How could we get all clinicians to say what is the worst it could be? Hi, my name is Bobby Reed, and I represent the National Kidney Foundation. My son, Alex, 28 to 22 years old, a student athlete, experienced a diagnostic error. When clinicians minimized his high blood pressure due to his age and his athleticism, this resulted in end-stage renal failure and that required a dialysis and ultimately a kidney transplant due to uncontrolled and unmonitored high blood pressure. What if the clinicians had considered his high blood pressure as something more serious than that of an age bias that had not been a factor? Good morning. My name is Desiree Collins Bradley and I represent Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. My 11-year-old daughter, Deance, who is medically complex, experienced a diagnosis error. Deance went almost over a year being misdiagnosed. She actually had an antibiotic-resistant infection called serratia which resulted from a delay in diagnosis and treatment, she has permanent lung damage. My what if is, what if her primary care physician had not been in her tunnel vision of this is just the routine infection that Deance always gets and had consulted her other specialists and B, had ordered further testing a whole lot sooner. Good morning. My name is Dr. Lynn Benke. I represent Women Heart, the National Coalition of Women with Heart Disease. I had coronary artery bypass surgery for my 50th birthday. The diagnostic error in my case was six months after my bypass, I had an unnecessary procedure for what was thought to be a significant blockage in the LAD, but it wasn't. This procedure resulted in the rupture of the LAD the intraaortic balloon pump being inserted, circulation difficulties in the right leg, and a near-death experience. It's not quite as hot there as we think. What if the cardiologist had looked at the previous studies to see that the blockage in the artery was actually smaller and that procedure hadn't been done? Good morning. 
My name is Sarah Keel, and I'm representing Sepsis Alliance. I experienced a delay in diagnosis of a serious, life-threatening sepsis caused by a routine laparoscopic hysterectomy. When I saw the surgeon with symptoms of infection, it was not investigated and missed. This delayed finding and treating an internal abscess, which in turn resulted in a massive hemorrhage and led to two emergency surgeries and septic shock. I spent two weeks in the hospital and was sent home with a wound vac and a pick line. The impact to my family is immeasurable. What if my surgeon had done blood work or investigated my symptoms when I saw him in the office three weeks after my hysterectomy and less than four months after delivering twins? But hopefully you'll find research in all of them or at least some of them. I'm Barbara Lewis, and I'm representing Kaiser Permanente. My sister Joan experienced several medical errors and as a result died quite tragically. I became an advocate of embedding the patient voice in health systems through patient and family advisory councils, known as PFACs, that are in about 70% of U.S. hospitals and about 5 to 10% less in non-U.S. hospitals. What if PFACs partnered with health systems and worked on policies and procedures, tools and techniques, and education so that we could enhance diagnostic excellence? Hi, I'm Pat Merriweather, the Engagement Director, and I'm representing the voices of two patient partners who could not be joining us this morning. The first is Vicki Martin. She would be speaking on behalf of her best friend, Joyce. Joyce suffered a delay in diagnosis of her breast cancer. Joyce had her mammogram on time, but the primary care doctors in her practice rotate in and out of the practice and her mammogram was lost. When she had another mammogram six months later, they found not only the breast cancer, but also the original mammogram. While her outcome and prognosis was good, it left Vicki wondering, what if doctors rotating on or off had a conversation about the patients and the test results they are expecting so that the test results aren't lost? And the last patient partner's story, the what if, is from Lorraine Johnson. She experienced a diagnostic error in Lyme disease. She was misdiagnosed with depression. For her, the diagnosis with Lyme disease was delayed for five years. And her illness progressed until she could no longer work or participate in family or social activities. She also incurred adverse side effects from antidepressants, including, for example, gaining 50 pounds. Her what if is, what if California physicians had recognized that Lyme disease existed in the state and considered this diagnosis when she first saw the physician for the symptoms? 